right. Look at example one on page 495. Wait just a minute. Did y'all hear that? What page are we on? 495 in one semester. Of 1,000. Uh, <clears throat> That's crazy. Okay. All right. This question is we're only determining the period. All right. All right. So what is the period of the cosine of 3t? Divided by 2. Period equals what over divide, what? Oh, oh, 2 oh. pi over b. 2 pi over 3. That's the period. 2 pi over 3. It says to complete one cycle of the curve is 2 thirds pi. There's going to be three cycles between a distance of 2 pi on the x-axis. And they've actually graphed it for you below the solution in your textbook. You can see three cycles between 0 and 2 pi. Do y'all see the three cycles between 0 and 2 pi of the cosine curve for A? You see it right here? Everybody looking? Three complete cycles. All right, look at B. What am I going to do with the sine of T over 2? That's the same thing as the sine of one half t. Yes. Right? So the period is what? Say it. Two pi over. Over what? One half. Yes. Because this one half is in our B position. Oh. Got it? Yes. We're going to wait for Landry to catch up with us. You with us, Landry? Okay. Go ahead. Explain it, Luke. Say it louder. Go ahead. Keep saying, Keep speaking. Okay. All right, so Andrew, look. Here we have one half t. What? I love it when a student has to explain something. That means that student understands it, right? Well, I hope so. Okay. Oh yes, Lord, I hope so too. Okay. The period is two pi over one half. The b value. <laughs> how do I? How do I rationalize? Not rationalize. How do I simplify the complex fraction? <coughs> Multiply by the reciprocal, which is just 2 over 2. So the period is what? Four, four pi. What does this say? We're going to complete how many cycles in distance of 2 pi? Half of a cycle. So it's going to take 4 pi to complete one whole cycle. Got, got it? All right, look at example two. That's going to be a long video. All right, it's going to be a very long video. All right, example two. The tan of 2t. What does that two tell me? Yes? It tells you the amount of cycles for 2 pi. Not 2 pi because it's a tan. Oh, yeah. Pi. pi. Yeah. So we're going to see two cycles in a distance of pi. But how long is it going to take to complete one cycle? Pi over two. A half a pi. Yes. All right. What about the tan of t over three? Notice when the number is big, we're squeezing it. Right? We're, we're squeezing those curves, getting more in the period. But when the number is less than one, what are we doing? We're stretching it out. Yes. It's going to be pi, yes, over one third, which is three pi. That's exactly right. Good job.
All right. Let's look at example three. I'm not going to use the same words they use. But tell me all the transformations here. What is this seven a transformation of? David? Amplitude. It's the amplitude. Also known as a vertical stretch, right? That means it's going to go high. It's going to go low. Audrey, what about this three? What does this tell me? Um, it's the beams and the Is it two pi over eight? So the period is two pi over three. All right, what about B? All right, Landry, what's this one third? Um, that's the amplitude. That's the amplitude. What's the amplitude tell me? Megan, what's the amplitude tell me? How high, how low, right? It gives me that, the maxims and the, these are gonna be low, right? Instead of going up to one, down, it's only gonna go up to a third, down to negative one third, right? All right, Luke, what do I do with this T over two? Uh, T over two, so that would uh, end up being uh, four pi. Correct, the period would be four pi, because the period would be two pi over one half, multiply it by two, it's four pi. So that curve is gonna be stretched out, right? Okay, last example for this lesson. We have whizzed through this. I hope you're understanding is as good as what you've given me now. Because I, I feel so good about this. All right. Are y'all with me? Okay. Example four. Negative two sine of four T. Okay. What does this negative tell me, Ryan? Uh, it's a vertical reflection. Correct. Vertical reflection. Okay. Instead of the sign going... Up, it's going to go down. Correct. Well, across the x-axis, oh, right? Yes. It is vertical. I always do this because when I say vertical, you think that other axis. But vertical is across the x-axis. All right, Jim, what does this two tell me? It's the amplitude. All right, and this four. Yes, tell me. Correct. All right, so the period is pi over two. It wants us to graph this curve from negative pi over two to pi over two. All right, so how many cycles should we see this distance? Yes? Two, two cycles. You got it? One and one because it's gonna take half a pi to complete one. So we should see two complete cycles. All right, this four tells me, I'm gonna go up to four and down to negative four. All right, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. It's really 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. All right? I haven't shifted it left to right yet, right? So now I need to divide pi over 2 into fourths. Four equal parts. So I take pi over 2, divide it by 4, or multiply by 1, fourth, and that's pi over eight. So the first one's going to be pi over eight. That's negative pi over eight. It's nice when we can just go left and right. You see how we got that? 
All right, I'm gonna add another eight to that to get to the next one. So pi over eight plus pi over eight is? Pi over four. Two pi over eight or pi over four. So that was two pi over eight. I'm gonna add another eighth of a pi, and that is? Three pi over eight. Three pi over eight. I'm gonna go in both directions. Negative pi over four, negative three pi over eight. <clears throat> All right, so the sign starts at zero. This negative says I'm not going up first, I'm going down. So I'm going down to negative four. No, uh, it should be negative two. I, I wrote four, but this should be two, guys. The amplitude is two. Two, negative two. I'm going to go down to negative two. At pi over four, back to zero. At three pi over eight, up to two, then back to zero. Here because I went down, I'm going up, backwards, here, here, here. All right, so it looks like something like this. All right, let's look at the examples on 7.4. And then after we finish this, I think we're gonna be finished before we'll look at homework. All right, because I taught them all in one lesson, all the transformations. <clears throat> all right. Let's look at example one, on page 501. Okay, describe the graph. It's negative two cosine t plus three. Then it wants us to graph it from negative two pi to two pi, including those. All right, so I'll go ahead and draw it out. All right, let's draw that x-axis a little farther here. All right, that's negative two pi. That's two pi. This is the x-axis. Let me make that the y-axis. All right, what does this negative tell me? It's a reflection. So we're gonna reflect across the x axis. All right, what does this two tell me? Yep. The amplitude. It's the amplitude. That's right. How high? How low? It's from two to two. Correct. All right, well maybe, except for that three. What's that three tell me? Vertical shift. It's a vertical shift up by three. So I'm not starting at one, right? I'm not starting at one. One is where I would normally start. We're going to label that one. But I'm going to go all the way up. One, two, three, three. So normally I would go down, right? And then back up. Wait, why would you normally start at one and not zero? Because the cosine goes down first. Yeah but my x-axis has been shifted up to three. So normally I would go down, right? But actually because it's been, the amplitude is two, normally I would go two above that x-axis, right? Because of the two. But instead of starting there and going down, I'm going to start to below the x-axis and go up. Got it? This shifted my 
x axis up three. From zero? Or from, from zero. Okay. Right? So normally I would have started at, gone from four to two. <coughs> Got it? But because I have an amplitude of two, I'm going to go from one to five. I almost called it four. But one to five. So this shifts my imaginary x-axis up. Three. All right. All right. Has the period changed? Period hadn't changed. All right. So I'm just going to divide this into four equal parts, knowing that I'm starting there. Let me erase those other two so I don't get. So I'm going to start here, and then what are going to be my four points? I know it's going to be two pi. What are they going to be? What's the first one? Pi over two. I'm gonna, yep, keep going. Yes. So I'm going to go in both directions the same. That's negative pi over two. Negative pi. Negative three pi over two. Negative two pi. So we go from one to zero to five back to zero to one. So we go here, then to zero, then to five, then to zero, then to one. So then it goes. Like that. All right, let's look at example two. We're just going to describe these. We don't have to graph these. <clears throat> All right, example two on page 502. How would you describe... <clears throat> the sign of t plus pi over 2. What's happened to it? What is this called? Horizontal shift. It's a horizontal shift or a phase shift. Oh. It's left by one half. Left by one half of a pi. It's left by pi over two. Okay, they're not taking one over the number. That's in the other ones. I said one over the number, so don't do one over the number. That's actually in our other functions. So we All right? Don't, have to worry about one over don't do the one over. You just have to do the B over C. It's just B, C over B, I'm sorry, C over B. You just have to do C over B. That was with our other functions. Erase that one over, because my example had one on it. It's just the C over B. We don't have a B. What's our B value? One. Yeah, once you've factored out the B, then you just use that number. Mine actually had a one on it. I changed my example. Here, this would have been a phase shift by three, not one third. Got it? By three, not one third. My example had a one here. Oh no, it had a one here. And this was 0.5. 
So I had 0.5 over. I had one over 0.5. All right, got it. Did everybody correct their notes? Wait, so phase shift is not one over three. No, it's just the C over B value. You just have to make sure that the T has a one. Got it? The T has to be a value of one. So if I had the sign of 2T plus pi over two, all right, what would I have to do with this one? I have to divide, I have to take that out. So it has to be two times T plus pi over four, right? Is that right? So just take that value once you've divided by it. Got it? All right, so this is a phase shift. Plus is left, minus is right. Everybody got their notes corrected? Good, all right? So that is just a phase shift left by pi over two. Does everybody see the sine curve? All right, so the hyphenated blue one is the original. But because it's plus pi over two, the red one is the final one. They've shifted it back by pi over two. Do you see that? Everybody see that? All right. Well, how would you describe the other one? The cosine of t minus 2 pi over 3. What's happened here? Yes, Ryan. Correct. So this would be right by 2 pi over 3. So instead of starting at 1 here for the cosine, it's going to go to 2 pi over 3 and start at one here. The period hasn't changed, so it's still gonna go out two pi, but now I've got two pi and two thirds more that I'm gonna end the cycle at. Make sense? Did they graph one of those for you? Yes. There's one on the bottom of that page. All right, now let's combine these transformations, which I did here. That's where I started. All right. Let's look at example three. Three sine of 2t plus five. Let's talk about all the transformations. All right. Who wants to take the three? David. Amplitude. Amplitude. Y'all, this is oftentimes on the ACT. Just this number. Yes. Three, or, or the amplitude. Amplitude. That's typically what they ask. <laughs> three is often times often. I mean, I'm sure it you got know, it. I mean, three is probably an answer right. at some point. Right. I have seen one that gave not only the amplitude, but the period. But now you are equipped if that's asked on the test. All right. So that's the amplitude. What's our period? Yep. Uh, 2 pi over the B value, which is 2. The period is? 1 pi, or pi. Period is pi, but it's complete going to complete two cycles in a distance of 2 pi radians. <clears throat> All right. Luke, what's that last number tell me? Um, that tells you, like, is it a um, horizontal shift? Uh-huh, and we're going to call it a phase shift. Yes, yeah, our phase shift, and it would be... Yes! Right? You got to divide. That's the division you have to do. You have to pull out that B value. And they've graphed one at the bottom. That was the division. I added another division for y'all. Sorry. All right. Now we're going to do some more. Example four. So everybody that answered that one can't answer one for this. So everybody else has to answer. In example four is 2 cosine 3t minus 4 minus 1. All right, what? Who wants to take the 2? Go ahead, Selby. 
Amplitude. A correct, excellent. Jim, you want to take the three? Yes, how many cycles in a distance of two pi? But that's correct. Two pi over three is going to be the period. Who wants to take this value? Landry? It's a phase shift. Phase shift. Four over three. Left or right? Um, right. Right by four over three. Excellent. And what's this last value? Alexis? Vertical shift down. One. That's where our new x-axis is going to be, right? Did they graph one for you? No. Doesn't look like they graphed it, unless it's on the... Yes, they graphed it. It's in that bottom, bottom left-hand side. Oh, the the dark, yeah. The, um... Here, my teacher book doesn't show the real dark. The dark line is the original x-axis. The red hyphenated line is that vertical shift down. All right. Let's look at example five. And we have to graph at least one complete cycle of it. All right. All right, so we have negative four sine... I, I'm going to write it as one half t plus one plus three. Uh, it doesn't look like a plus. All right. What's that plus three? I'm going to go ahead and draw my new. Yeah, that's my new x axis. All right, so we're gonna go up and down. All right, here's the, here's the original. That's the original. So we're gonna go up to three. One, two, three. Now that's my new. Okay, it's the sign, all right? So instead of going from here up, we're gonna go here down, right? Unless we've been phase shifted, which we've been phase shifted. So we're gonna go up four and down four. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, three, two, one, two, three, down to negative one, all right? All right, tell me about this one half and the one. Yep. Uh, we have to do one half, or two pi over one half to get our period, which right. would be four pi. Okay, so it's gonna take four pi to complete one cycle. So it's gonna be a long one. It's gonna be a, a stretched out one. All right, and then what about the one? about the one yep so, right one over a half so left by two <laughs> so we're gonna start at negative two and go down and we have to go a distance of four pi right so let's figure out where we're gonna end what is negative two plus four pi in your calculator? What do you get? Uh, 10.56. Okay, we'll call it 10.5. Negative four plus what? Negative two. And I want to end at 4 pi from there. So I'm going to add 4 pi because that's the period. Make sense? So I'm going to go from negative 2 to 10.4. And I'm going to divide it into fourths. 
Got it? So what is that? Did we say 10.4, 10 10.5? 10 10 10 I, I, I said, 10 .6. let's do 10.6. We'll do 10.6. I kept thinking four from the four pi. <laughs> okay, so we're going 12.6, right? That's said this is a 12.6, which is four pi about, right? All right, so we're going to take 12.6 divided by 4. Was 12.6 divided by 4? 3.2. So 3.2. All right, so we're going to take negative 2 and add 3.2 to it. So that's at 1.2, right? We're going to take 1.2 and add 3.2, which is... 4.4 and then 4.4 and add 1.2 which is 6 5.6 that doesn't make sense what is 12.6 divided by 4 1.2 Four. Oh, oh, yes, yes, here. 3.2. <laughs> okay, I added the 1.2. All right. So that's our four key points. It's actually 3.15. Okay. That's okay. okay. Just making sure. Well, no, I said it and I didn't. It's I didn't okay. Finish. It's okay. All right, so we're starting here at negative two at one point. Two ish. We're going down. No, nope, we're going halfway because at four point wait, it goes. Yep, here, and then we're going back to zero, and then we're going up to seven and back to zero. All right. So this is a sine curve. I was thinking for a minute. I was doing the cosine. All right. So that's what it should look like. Just one cycle. See how we did that? Got it? Okay, now, can we go from a graph to an equation? All right, so if you look at example six, you can either take it as a sine or as a cosine. Every hash mark is a fourth of a pi. Okay, so if everybody looks. All right, you're looking. If I'm taking it as a cosine, I'm going here. To here. So I'm going from negative pi over 4 to whatever this is. Got it? If I'm doing the sine, then I'm starting, I'm going back here, actually. I'm going back here. Okay, so my preference is let's do the cosine. Because we can see the cosine. I see the cup upside down. I'm going to do the upside down cup. Okay? So I'm going to say it begins. I can't see it in that. Okay. I'm going to say it begins at negative pi over 4. Begins at negative pi over 4. Where, where does it finish? Right, pi. Pi. Pi and a fourth. Pi and a half, pi and three fourths. Where does it finish? Maybe like three over two pi. I think it's seven pi over four. I think it was a whole pi and another three fourths. That's how many dashes I counted. There are seven, seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hyphens. So seven fourths. 
So it finishes at seven pi over four. So its period is two pi. The period hasn't changed, right? So the period is two pi. So there's only one cycle. So right here, that's gonna be a one. All right, now, is there gonna be anything out? And we're gonna do the cosine, cosine. Okay, it's gonna be T, but we have phase shifted it. All right, um, has it been reflected? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so a negative has to go out here. What is the amplitude? Um, negative two to two. It's so the so amplitude two. is two. That's right. How do you know it was one uh, one cycle? Because it, we completed one cycle from negative pi over four and to that's seven. Two pi. And that's a distance of two pi. All right. What um, what's the phase shift? It would normally start at one. Correct, at the y-axis. But now it starts at? Negative pi. Negative pi over four. Negative pi over four. So that's a phase shift left. So what do I do here? Plus. Okay, have we vertically shifted it up or down? No. Yo, there's an infinite number of of equations. We could have said it phase shift to the right by three fourths. We could have done that. So this would have been, the, we wouldn't have done a reflection. We would have started up at two. Do you see that? We could have started up at two. We could have phase shifted it right, I'm going to say that's three-fourths. That's the same, same graph. Get it? All right. So there are, are multiple possibilities for any graph. So when you have these in your homework, it doesn't mean that your answer's wrong. Okay, always. All right, so then, identities. Are these possible identities? Last two examples. Are these possible identities? <clears throat> does the cosine of pi over two plus t, does that equal the sine of t? I'm gonna rewrite that as the cosine of t plus pi over two, does that equal the sine of t? So the cosine, we could do the math, but the cosine typically starts at one at the x axis, but now we shifted it back here. What if we just make T zero? If we just make T zero. That would be the cosine of pi over two. Does it equal the sine of zero? And then what if we made it pi over four? You have to check a couple of them, and you have to graph it. Because what does this make it seem as? What's the cosine of pi over 2? Uh, zero. What's the sine of 0? Wait, how did you know the cosine of pi over 2 is 0? Unit circle. No. And the sine of 0 is? 0. zero. 
It, it appears to be, but what if we made this pi over two? So that would be the cosine of pi over two plus pi over two. Does that equal the sine of pi over two? What's pi over two plus pi over two? Pi over four. No, two pi over four. Two pi over two, yeah, which, is which is cosine of pi. Does that equal the sine of pi over two? Okay, what's the cosine of pi? Uh, one. No, negative one. Negative one. What's the cos? What's the sine rather of pi over two? One. one. Is it an identity? No. No. All right. That's how you. Yes. <coughs> or you can see the graph. Do Do you see the graph? Um. To the right, to the left rather, in your margin. That's the cosine of pi over two. So they do intersect at every zero, but then they don't. And then, so literally the cosine starts here, right? The sine starts here. Okay, I should have drawn it a different color. This is at pi over two. Okay, I, I, I want y'all to see this. If I could lift up the cosine curve and horizontally shift it right by a half a pi, it'd be the exact same curve. Do you see that? I shift it right, it's there the exact same curve. All right, so that second identity, it has a minus here. So there's a minus T. So that's the cosine of negative T plus pi over two. But you have to factor that negative one out, which is the cosine of negative T minus pi over two equals a sine of T. This is when it's been shifted right. And this is when it's identical. All right? Let's do the last one. Last two identities. Example eight. All right. Does the cotan of t over the cosine of t equal the sine of t, all right? The, the cotan is the cosine over the sine. Okay, so it's the cosine over the sine. Over the cosine. Over the cosine. Which is just, yeah, which is just the sine. The cosine, yeah, I. it's well, over I'm one, simple. so I multiply by one, <coughs> over the cosine. And that just cancels out. So yeah, it's an identity. Is that how we're supposed to solve it or no? Well, this is one over the sine. Oh. Right? So then it's not my identity. Cotan is, okay, the tan is sine over cosine, so cotan is cosine over sine. And that's just over the cosine. You have to multiply by the reciprocal, the cosine. It's the one over the sine of T equals the sine of T. So it can't be an identity. Yeah. It's not an identity. When at first it appeared to be, right? I had to just keep rethinking it. it that is not an identity. All right, let's do B real quick, then we'll be done, guys. All right, Sign. just remember, I made a mistake. It's not one over that value, it's just that value. Okay, sine over tan. Sine over tan, does that equal the cosine? I'm not putting the T. 
What, what are we going to substitute in? Sine over cosine. For the tan, yeah. that's going to be sine over cosine. Yeah. Multiply by cosine over sine. That eliminates. That's cosine over sine squared. Well, that's over 1. Oh, that's right. That's right. Right? So that is cosine t equals cosine t. That is an identity.